Kitchen. I'm Adriana Cotero, glad you could join us. Not enough feet on the ground in an outdated facility and now Guam Memorial Health Hospital is faced with another challenge. According to GMH Administrator Lillian Posadas, their electronic health record computer system company is no longer going to support the hospital. This is a system all employees at GMH utilize to enter the care provided for patients that then gets translated to billing. So we're struggling with that, particularly because the company, Cantata, who administers the electronic health system that we have right mm -hmm. now, they're sunsetting the system that we have, meaning they're not going to support it anymore. If any issues or problems that uh, we encounter, uh, they're not going to support us to fix it. So we are, uh, you know, really trying very hard. Mm -hmm. We're working against time because we only have about a year. Next year it will be sunsetting. Posada said GMH has to find a vendor that will provide a system that fits GMH's particular work environment as funding is an issue to purchase a compatible system. Into our uh, 2020 budget, a request for 51, $57 million for capital improvement and included in that is the, uh, the EHR system, the water repair, I mean the roofing repair. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get funded for those, so, you know. Uh, that's another challenge. <laughs> These are key issues that GMH faces and working in this time frame, the hospital must procure a new computer system, install and also train employees before December 2020. A visiting linguist shares her work regarding Chamoru grammatical rules, saying that a 50-year-old reference source for Chamoru grammar needs refining and updating to reflect trends in linguistics. Chris Barnett has more. Dr. Sandra Chung, a celebrated linguist, was on Guam to discuss her take on Chamorro grammar rules. While that discussion was highly technical, Dr. Robert Underwood was in attendance and shares more about grammar rules for our native tongue. A set of grammatical rules uh, exist already. It's just that they're kind of waiting to be formatted and clarified. And so uh, in the history of the Chamorro language, there's been a series of grammars. Uh, the last one done about... Uh, 50 years ago, 45, 50 years ago, and that's basically the one that we're using today. Underwood, of course, is referencing Topping and Dunka's Chamorro reference grammar, what has been the go-to for indigenous grammar rules, but Chung, in her discussion, says Topping and Dunka's work needs updating. Dr. Chung has been working on her own reference grammar, and it's just formatted differently, and I think clarifying it, and also uh, um, with the more recent findings in the field of linguistics, it's a little bit complicated, but sometimes people think that a, a, a set of uh, grammatical rules is somehow going to change the language. It's supposed to reflect the language. Underwood and Chung both shared how Chamorro is unique in its use of affixes, which are placed at the beginning and or in the body of words to modify their meanings. Example of Chamorro affixes are Z, Fa, Ha, Man, and Mat, just to name a few. The whole series of affixes and there's 18 in Chamorro are used to create different forms of verbs and nouns. You can take a, ver a verb and turn it into a noun. You can take a noun and turn it into a verb simply by modifying it through an affix. That's real creative Chamorro. We asked Underwood to explain how affixes enable Chamorro words to fluidly change from nouns to verbs something that is unique to our language. For example, if I said, uh, I'm, I, I rode a Ford over here, you can say in tomorrow, I've literally forded my way here, you know, which you can say in English, but it's very awkward, but in tomorrow it's very natural. And it shows that you really know your tomorrow. I hit the ball, uh, you know, in, uh, in tomorrow, you change the uh, verb, hit, in order to indicate whether it's a specific ball or just any ball. Whereas in English you say, I hit the ball or I hit a ball. And tomorrow you say, upana ki bola, or you can say, mamana ki bola. It's an entirely different uh, verb form. Chung says her research is 80% complete and she plans on presenting her final findings on Guam. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Touted as the West Point of the U.S. Fire Service, our Joan Ogden Charferis has more about the first Chamaru female to graduate from the National Fire Academy. Charika Chargaloff is the EMD supervisor for the 911 Center under the Guam Fire Department. She's been with the 911 Center for 16 and a half years, and despite being a stressful profession, it's a job she thoroughly enjoys. Knowing that I'm helping the people, and as a supervisor, I'm helping to train 
and get the other dispatchers and call takers um, to the point where they can help the people. Recently, Cherica was afforded the opportunity to attend the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland. It was administration of public assistance for community recovery. Um, it pretty much helps the Guam Fire Department to, in our instructor's exact words, not leave that free money on the table when there's a recovery from a storm or any other type of disaster. The objective of the six-day course was to familiarize students with the FEMA Public Assistance Grant Program. The program provides assistance to states, local governments, U.S. territories, and certain private nonprofit organizations during times of hardship resulting from major disasters. It was a pretty intense course. We started on a Sunday and it was 8 to 5 and every night we had homework. We had a final project that was due on the second to the last day, and then of course final exam on the last day of class. So it was a pretty strenuous, demanding course. She says the course was enlightening and informative. My take back from it is that I'm going to help the fire department to push further and, and do all that we can to help our department recover from any type of disaster it may encounter. In addition, Cherica's special project was recognized as among the best in the class. The president of the National Fire Academy was requesting for three of the best projects from the course to keep to use as their justification that the course is not only needed, wanted, but necessary. And upon graduating with fellow GFD Representative Battalion Chief Ron Castro, Cherica made history as the first Chamorro female to graduate from the academy. Chief Manabusen, who is our fire marshal for the fire department, um, he whispered some stuff before I left to me telling me that it was very important that I go, that it was very important that I do well, and that I'd be the first of many different things but I didn't realize the extent until he shared it on our management chat after everything was over and done with. She's humble and proud. I got to represent not only the fire department, the Guam Fire Department, but to be a representative towards females um, in management positions, to be recognized as the first Chamorro female, that was, amazing to me. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfris. Offering a hero's welcome, Chili's Grill and Bar is saluting all veteran and active duty personnel on Guam with an offer of a complimentary entree on Veterans Day. Service members can choose from the following delicious entrees, old timer with cheese, grilled chicken sandwich and fries, or Cajun chicken pasta. According to a press release, they are honored to serve all those who sacrifice, serve, and commit acts of bravery in the service of our nation. Chili's is located on the second floor of the Two Monsans Plaza. Stay tuned next on Weekend Edition. We have trend spotting and still to come, the Guam Crime Stoppers Report. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Half the day, I'm in the club. Half the day, welcome to Two Lovers Point. Half the day, I'm in the club. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News. Giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats. And via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained. Whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. 
circus is in town. This up next and more on Trend Spotting. Hoppa day everyone, I'm Cami Aguirola and welcome back to another episode of Trend Spotting. Here are the topics that had you talking this week. The Archdiocese says no more holy water from spray bottles. You may have seen the video, a local priest blessing All Souls Day cemetery goers with holy water from a spray bottle. The video showed people dodging the spray of holy water from Father Julius Akinyemi. Some ducked and others expressed surprise at being hit with the torrent of holy water. Father Julius is a priest for Catholic churches, Umatic and Maleso parishes. The video went viral from WhatsApp to Twitter to Facebook. KUAM reached out to the Archdiocese for a comment about the videos and Archbishop Michael Burns responded with the following statement. Statement. Father Julius and I have discussed the matter. He meant no disrespect and faced a large area to be blessed with holy water. He'll use the traditional means of sprinkling holy water on future occasions. At Tyler X San on Instagram said, As someone who attended All Souls Day Mass in Humatak this year, I can assure you we had no problem with it. LOL, it was a spray bottle, not a water blaster. At Ken 8769 US said, To some, it may not be seen as a big deal and may not take it as a disrespect to others, but I think think otherwise. Religion is not something you take as a joke and paying respect to our loved ones who have passed away are in need of prayers from us still living and from the church to continue their souls to find peace is no joke. No disrespect to the priest, but I think the church should have been more prepared to accommodate everyone. At Liz Yu Wong said, I was passing by the cemetery. Lots of people were there. Just imagine doing it the normal way. At least this way is more efficient. In response, at Erica Lauren underscore said, That's what I said. I attend All Souls Day Mass in Marizzo. Even with a bit of overcast at 7 in the morning, it was still hot out there. I think he was thinking about saving his congregation some time in the sun. And he lights in our day with a laugh. We put up a poll on Instagram asking if you agreed with this method and here are your results. Up next, an employee letter says Brennan is not fit to run DOC. A letter from the Department of Corrections employees highlighting major concerns they have with Director Samantha Brennan has been obtained by KOAMs. The six-page letter, which is accredited to the core of the Department of Corrections, cites a very hostile environment within our facility. It also says Brennan and former Deputy Director Joy Tulahi began to feud amongst themselves within two weeks of being appointed by Governor Lou Leon Guerrero. The most liked comment with 31 likes on Instagram is from user at Mr.6366. They have major concerns because Director Brennan is not a corrupted director. No more doing illegal now that she is boss. We need more leaders like her. At KDP underscore DJP commented, In law enforcement, high-ranked males find it hard to take orders from a female supervisor, so muscles get flexed. But we gotta get used to it. Times have changed. In another comment, at MG Collins 1970 expressed concern saying, I hope this isn't an indicator of the sexism and racism that DOC staff is exhibiting. Reverse racism exists and sexism is prevalent in a male-dominant profession. To view the letter from DOC employees in full, visit our website website at koem.com. Not only did they set out to break the world record, but they smashed it. The current Guinness World Record of the longest parade of Nissan cars was set two years ago in Texas with 250 participating. Nissan Guam reports 321 Nissan vehicles crossed the finish line. The parade started in Timuning and ended at Paseo in Hagatnya. According to Nissan Guam, their evidence will still be needed to be verified before it's official. The Super American Circus performs this weekend. The circus is scheduled for this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at the UOG Cowboy Field House in Mangilao. You definitely don't want to miss the thrilling acts which include acrobats, daredevils, an aerial starfire act, juggling, a wheel of danger, and so much more. That's all for this episode. Sidzos Masi for watching and I'll see you next week. Matson is in this community. We've been in this community for decades. We're going to be in this community for decades to come. Things will get busy, things will get quiet, but we're going to be here. We're your hometown carrier. And that matters to us. Reliability is the core of our business. We take pride in ensuring that we arrive in Guam on time as scheduled. It's our local employees who understand the market, who understand the business, and provide that a hard work for you each and every day. 
But when we hold ourselves to high standards, our customers also hold us to high standards. We establish good business relationships that turn into friendships. That's why it's so important to be here and be trusted by your customers. We want you to trust Matson like your friend, like your family. Advances in technique and medications used to prevent dental pain have shattered the myth that a dental visit is something to fear, even the dreaded root canal or wisdom tooth extraction. Swabbing or spraying a topical numbing agent on before the injection and using different techniques and anesthetics can create a relatively comfortable or pain-free injection. Injections are often the most feared procedure. Some patients don't like the sounds or the vibrations of decay removal. If you're still nervous or you gag easy, Despite these techniques, very safe oral medicines can be taken before your dental appointment to eliminate all fears or some clinics use nitrous oxide gas. Pain relievers can easily be prescribed to eliminate mild to severe dental discomfort after any visit. For your helpful dental minute, I'm Dr. Kenny Bourgeois of Paradise Smiles. We shall never know all the good that a simple smile can do. KUAM Podcast Network is on demand and available anytime for you to get your fill of the hottest topics from Team KUAM. These types of things are happening. From news. He has yeah. been in and out of jail since 2012. To pop culture. There's a bunch of people even saying now this is the greatest movie of all time. That's crazy. Health and nutrition. We're putting all these chemicals into our body, all these preservatives, and down the line we have health issues. Food. I'm very passionate about really good food. Nostalgic playlists and everything in between. This guy has worked with Justin Bieber, DJ Khaled, Chance the, the Rapper. The amount of fangirling right now that's happening inside this body is crazy. So listen up whenever and wherever and subscribe and follow us today on SoundCloud, on Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify or your favorite podcast platform. Happy and happy holidays. I'm asking you to join me in supporting the U.S. Marine Corps' Toys for Tots program by donating a new or unwrapped toy for kids this year. The Toys for Tots program, now in its 10th year on Guam, has partnered with the Guam Chamber of Commerce, Salvation Army, Catholic Social Services, and the KUAM Care Force. For the third year, we have continued to expand into the CNMI in partnership with the Saipan Young Professionals. Together, we hope to make this a Christmas to remember for all the kids and teens throughout the Marianas. You may drop off your new unwrapped toys between now and December 13th in any one of our boxes throughout Guam, Saipan, or here at the KUAM studio. We ask that when purchasing this year, please also remember gifts for older children and young teenagers. On behalf of the Marine Corps Toys for Tots Foundation, Marine Corps Activity Guam, and the KUAM Care Force, we thank you for coming together and sharing in the spirit of the season. This message is brought to you by the KUAM Care Force. Reserve your space today for Christmas Pops 2, Sunday, November 24th at the Guam Museum. A festive kickoff to the holiday shopping experience with food, entertainment, and other holiday activities. Calling all crafty entrepreneurs and local product artisans. Reserve your space today. Email promotions at KUAM.com. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. Sergeant Paul Tapao is here with the Guam Police Department. And the police, of course, Sarge, are the men and women who have gone through training. They've made the oath. They've made the commitment and everything to serve Guam. But policing, mm -hmm. the verb, is something that you said that we can all do. You, you guys are deputized. You guys wear the badges and everything like that. But it's also incumbent upon us as Guamanians to report crimes that we spot. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is a, a great segue to um, our Crime Stoppers um, series. And what we're, we're actually reaching out to the community relative to an individual that's wanted for questioning. And um, the policing part is, you're right, we, do, we take care of the general police work and everything, reporting and apprehending criminals, but the policing of the community can actually be that of the individuals and the constituents of this island. And you know, this is where the partnership, the collaborated efforts between the Guam Police Department, the media and the community come together in understanding that three-pronged approach with the uh, Crime Stoppers Network and how it works. You know, the police, we take the case, 
We reach out to the media for their help to disseminate the information, and we ask the community to provide that information to the Guam Police Department so that we can bring closure. So, you know, the information that we're giving out, we're giving out a picture, we're even giving out a name, mm -hmm. and, and uh, this is the opportunity for the for the entire island to really bring justice and to showcase that this is a step closer in bring in taking ownership of our island. And we say this all the time. It's like you know, if you have any sort of information, even, no matter how vague it is, it may be completely abstract and everything, some information is better than no information, right? It is, and you, you're, you're absolutely spot on on that. And you know, we always tell people those minute informations that you give can actually be that one piece that really brings the puzzle together. So, you know, understanding the networks of how we, we, we put the information out um, with the live stream that we did with the crime time. That's you know, a very, we, very good point. We were talking about being at the scene showcasing what happened, giving a full illustration, a full play-by. And here we have, you know, again, the suspect's name, the suspect's, uh, the picture and how he looks like. And of course, what the inc where the incident had occurred. And it happened at the um, the um, Lucky Land game room in Machechi. So anybody who saw or knows his whereabouts, you know, this is, this is information that our investigators need. We've already identified him. We just need help in locating him. And these are small steps again into bringing and to getting the ownership of our item because we're seeing it you know i mean everything is attributed to the to the battle with addiction and you know people are are, are are actually committing these these violent crimes within our community and a lot of it is really fueled towards addiction so we want to we want to we want to do our part with the guam police department but the part in which the community can be a part of is really taking a stand towards violence, taking a stand against crime, and just simply reporting crime, mm -hmm. and giving the, the the officers the information that they need to bring closure, so that you know we all we all need to be a part of this. Everybody's a part of this equation. We all need to work together and bring closure to all of our cases that we entertain. And what was interesting is Crime Time. You know, like our starting lineup live stream that we do every Wednesday at 9 a.m. on yeah. Facebook. It's one of the more popular shows that we do, like um, streaming, but. You and Adriana were going, you guys were literally walking the steps yeah. of where the crime had, you know, you're retracing, taking the community through, you know, that part of Mingilao. And there were a lot of comments coming in. Pretty soon people weren't even trying to talk with you guys. They were having their own side conversations yeah. anymore, talking about like, hey, was that the gray scion that I saw? Was this 11 o'clock? I think I heard something. And so, you know, I mean, that's good information to have. It is, it is. And, and, and when we do this, and this is where the collaboration with the Guam Police Department, the Guam Crime Stopper and the media comes in and said, we bring that to them so that we can actually allow them to you know maybe jot their memories so they can you know like hey you know what i did i you know what? come to think of it what they're telling me i remember what happened i i saw something i saw an individual i saw the incident and i just didn't think that it was something of that serious of a nature and that's you know that that played out perfectly us being there you know gft allowing us to be within the property so that we can showcase where it happened the events that led, that, that led to the individual where they ran to it. And of course, you know, reaching out to the community because we, sh we show where uh, the individuals ran. But you know, again, that's how we work. That's how we use the media. This is where the collaborative effort comes in with the media bringing the information to the community. And this is a great opportunity because with the advent of social media, you know, it, it, it really, people are now in tune as to what's going on and people are now in tune in understanding what they can do to help. All right, Sarge, we'll tell you what, let's give our audience a little bit of a uh, exercise right here, right, right now, because uh, we'll give them something to chew on. It's this week's Crime of the Week, right? This, yeah, this is the wanted flyer that we circulated through the early part of the week. Uh, it's a robbery case, and we are actively looking for Mr. K. Jack Steve, Mel Micronesian. Anybody has information as to his whereabouts, give us a call, please. Okay, so if you know how to, um, about this perpetrator, take notes, because this is what you need to know. The Guam Police Department is seeking the help from the community relative to a wanted individual for questioning in an ongoing robbery investigation. Detectives from the Guam Police Department Investigation Division is seeking the help in locating Kajak Steve Mel Chukis. This is relative to an ongoing robbery investigation that occurred on October 21st at the Lucky Land Game Room in Dededo. Kajak Steve is believed to be armed and should not be approached. Anyone who may have any information as to his whereabouts, you're encouraged to call our GPD dispatchers at 472-8911 or 472 7586153 Information can also be submitted anonymously to the Guam Crime Stoppers tip line at guam.crimestoppersweb.com.
If anyone has any information about this crime or any other crime, you can call our 24-hour hotline at 477-HELP, that's 4357, or submit a tip online at guam.crimestoppersweb.com. All calls will remain completely confidential, and a cash reward of up to $1,000 could be paid if the information provided leads to an arrest and a grand jury indictment. Your call does make a difference. Okay, Sarge, hopefully by the time we do this segment next week, we will have brought justice to this case and everything. But uh, I know you have a special message that you want to send a shout-out, right? Yeah, you know, on behalf of our, our, our hardworking men and women of the uh, community affairs, we want to say uh, so what a cop and uh, Tonkin Cop to Ms. Samjai for really showing gratitude to us, and we appreciate everything that you do. And, you know, good luck to all, and uh, happy, you know, feast of... Uh, all our Thai community out there, they're celebrating a big event this weekend, but they are. Uh, you know, Ms. Samjai, thank you for taking care of uh, our, you know, our officers within the community affairs. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right, very nice. <laughs> appreciate it, thank you. All right, Sarge, we'll see you next week and we will see you right after this. Mark is the best husband and father you could ask for. Right, mi amor? My brother, he's just a big kid. Great guy. Best man at my wedding. Just gotta keep him off the dance floor. Uncle Mark's the best. He taught me how to seal a base. He stopped by yesterday just to chat. Honestly, this place would fall apart without him. Communications is going beyond broadcast and cross-platform, giving you original digital content on every social media and digital platform. From original news mini-docs to supplementary features, sponsored content, and original shows and live streaming. We're changing the media game and providing something for everyone. We recognize how you consume media is no longer one size fits all, and we're creating custom content for your needs. It's round the clock, shareable, and of course, interactive, because your voice is an important part of the community conversation. So how do you KUAM? The possibilities are limitless. It's that time of year, Christmas Pops 2. Your official kickoff to the holiday season is coming to the Guam Museum on Sunday, November 24th from noon to 6 p.m. Featuring the largest array of unique holiday gifts and crafts for all your shopping under one roof, tons of Christmas activities including a DIY and customization workshop, holiday photos with Santa, delectable treats and eats, festive entertainment, and for adults 21 and over, the return of the Strongbow Holiday Cider Bar and the Blue Moon Ice Coffee Ale Winter Lodge. Admission is free, and you can purchase a commemorative shopping tote for just $5 to benefit the Edward M. Calvo Cancer Foundation. It's the perfect event to get you in the Christmas spirit. Save the date for Christmas Pops, Sunday, November 24th from noon to 6 p.m. at the Guam Museum. Presented by Strongbow Cider and Blue Moon Ice Coffee Blonde. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. When you've got a birthday weekend, that means you've got an extra day to celebrate. So, we all say happy birthday on Saturday, November 9th to Colin Leon Guerrero. Happy birthday, coming with love from Rowan James. And on Sunday, November 10th, happy birthday to Pauline Lazama. Happy birthday blessing says your entire family. We hope everybody out there, on behalf of Cold Stone Creamery and all of us at KUM, have a fantastic island weekend and a fantastic birthday. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KUAM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birthday. That's all the time we have from all of us here at Guam's News Network. Thanks for watching and have a safe weekend.
KUAM TV8, your official local broadcaster of Tokyo 2020. Presented locally by IT&E.